Red Hat and IBM are at it again. Let's talk about open source today as they unlock what's next in the AI sphere, as AI has been all the hype over the last year or so. And with Red Hat's decision to close source repositories last year, we're going to hear about what was announced as far as the Red Hat Summit goes, about Linux, and how it's about to start serving AI as they're really trying to hype things up. Well, let's board the hype train and let it begin as the moment for AI has been predicted. This is a previous post by the CEO, Matt Hicks, which is a post that talks about things such as the new paradigm shift that is called AI and emphasizes some of the rapid pace in this particular technological advancement called artificial intelligence and that Red Hat as a company cannot ignore as it embraces it to remain competitive. I'll post a link in the description below as this was posted last year. And now we kind of get a telling tale of why, because as it will be known here soon in 2024, the Red Hat Summit event really sheds a light on what was meant by this read as the company seemingly sees this as an opportunity to embrace innovation and come up with a way to effectively work on AI complex problems effectively and efficiently together through collaboration. We'll see what all this means with their latest announcement. During the Red Hat Summit, Matt Hicks does take the stage and talks about open source and AI. Let's listen in for a bit. Unlocks the world's potential, and that's what's happening right now. Because the world's potential isn't limited to software developers. We are now seeing the impact of broadening the open source ecosystem in the world of AI. And this isn't going to slow down as models get smaller, as training gets cheaper, as capabilities grow, the reach of this technology will expand across the planet. The breakthrough from MIT today will be expanded on by the IITs in India tomorrow. Researchers will use this as a channel for their next concept. And in turn, they'll equip developers with constant new capabilities. To all right, so what exactly are we talking about here? Well, first I want to make a little mention of the audio here. They can really step up their game. Hopefully they will next year because it's just awful for an event like this. Anyways, with that aside, I want to talk about the echoing of the previous blog that took place in 2023, talking about how AI advancements going to bring innovation, new solutions, and how Red Hat wants to be a part of that. So in another blog post going in pair with the summit, Again, from Matt Hicks, this one's called Open Communities Bring the Potential of AI to Reality. We're, of course, focusing again on open. But why focus on such a word when Red Hat had recently, about a year ago, closed sourced its repositories to RHEL, which, in my opinion, sounds somewhat hypocritical, focusing on so much of the open source and open communities that are supposed to be bringing new innovations to AI. As we all know, Red Hat and IBM have a proprietary past with their software offerings. So the sudden emphasis on open source AI might be a little jarring as I've discussed in many videos, including Red Hat response to the open source community about RHEL and varying other corporations responding to RHEL as they close sourced their repos. You can check out that saga in my other videos. Go search them on the channel by simply typing in Red Hat. Now, I don't necessarily want to harp on those things, but I do want to continue to talk about this post here as Matt talks about the excitement level being an eight out of 10. But looking back on those early experience, I now realize that something was missing. I'd ask myself such questions as why can't I make my AI more personalized? Where could I have used AI to help my teams more? What if communities can improve this like we do with open source software? Will AI follow patterns of open source or are we going back to proprietary? Again, a huge focus on the word open source. So let's talk about some reasons why this big announcement was made, which we're going to get into even more. A Linux-based AI container is coming our way, but some reasons I can imagine Red Hat really wanting to channel focus towards open source is one, feels like there's commercial interest here. Seems like they're promoting products and services. Of course, they make money off of support and with some community-driven collaboration and development. Well, it really drives that commercial interest. Also, there's a potential for market positioning. There is no great way to move around AI right now. And what better way than this current announcement of, well, RHEL AI 
which we're gonna get more in depth with. So some might say that instead of openness and transparency, that this is more of a market positioning play. They've already mentioned that they need to stay competitive and what better way than to have control and influence over other large organizations and companies that have to be bound by the tools that Red Hat ends up creating, especially when they have direct control of open source AI initiatives by using a broader developer community. It's interesting that they've positioned themselves into what seemingly seems like democratizing AI and focusing on community collaboration. Of course, there is a potential to bring positive outcomes here for the broader developer community. And the two things that they're doing to make this come to fruition is they're open sourcing their Granite language in Code Assistant LLMs. And then second, open sourcing Instruct Lab, which says here uses a novel synthetic database alignment tuning method for larger language models. We're gonna talk about these two things in a bit, but let's get into what is RHEL AI? A guide to the open source way of doing AI. Another bold claim by RHEL, all seemingly made throughout the summit, as well as in their posts here on their blog page. The main objective here of RHEL AI and the Instruct Lab project is to empower domain experts to contribute directly to large language models with knowledge and skills. This allows domain experts to more effectively build an AI infused application, such as chatbots. RHEL includes everything you need by one, taking advantage of the community initiative via open source models and open source skills and knowledge for training, providing a user-friendly set of software tools and workflow that targets domain experts without data science experience and allows them to do training and fine tuning, for packaging software and operating systems with optimized AI hardware enablement, and for enterprise support and intellectual property identification. So that gives us a little bit of insight on Red Hat Enterprise Linux AI, at least the goals, and it comes with the Open Granite Models, Instruct Lab Model Alignment, and optimized bootable Red Hat Linux for the models and Instruct Lab. And then finally, what is probably the moneymaker is the enterprise support, lifecycle, and identification. This is where Red Hat flourishes, and it's probably the actual importance of Red Hat as it helps them facilitate AI adoption, and then they can offer things like support when people start adopting Red Hat Enterprise Linux AI to actually build their data models out or fine tune them for specific hardware. It also puts people into a specific ecosystem where they have to use the tools given to you by Red Hat Enterprise Linux AI, all while trying to make it as flexible and scalable for companies and organizations, which is a big deal in the space of AI and where it stands today. So let's break down Red Hat Enterprise Linux AI a little bit. First off, we have really an entire container that kind of holds all this together. We can think of this sort of as the Red Hat Enterprise Linux AI container, which has all these things inside of it, aka AI hardware specific toolkits and libraries. This helps us communicate down to the hardware level. You can think of drivers, libraries, all sorts of things that exist in here to help us talk to hardware through things such as frameworks and libraries. Then we have tools for training, generating data, and other varying tools. And on top of all that is really the Granite models and the Instruct Lab. We're gonna talk about these a little bit more in depth, but Instruct Lab really just helps us make it easier to fine tune models and make it domain specific, meaning the AI aware of whatever specific domain you're trying to fine tune it for. The Granite models are the actual data models that everything's built upon themselves. We'll check that out at Hugging Face soon, but make sure to smash that like button if you're enjoying a breakdown of this Red Hat Enterprise Linux AI brought out of the Red Hat Summit. And I think we can tell why this is so important to create for Red Hat. This gives them a way to allow organizations and companies to better use an all-in-one built-in environment or a bootable container that helps them be completely hardware agnostic so they can trade hardware and move their tools around and still allow all of their models and tools that they've built on top of the bootable container to communicate with other types of hardware. Because as hardware is getting better and servers are changing, which AI is ran on, well, it'd be really nice to be able to package all that up, easily move it across environments, and then run and deploy it on different types of more efficient and performant hardware architectures. We can definitely tell why there's a potential for Red Hat Enterprise Linux AI to be an amazing offering from Red Hat. And then once the lock-in happens, 
Red Hat is, has the capability of selling long-term support as well as enterprise support to the bigger organizations that end up using this new form of containerized Linux. Okay, so what was actually released? Well, there's a model name called Granite 7B Base. It's been trained on around 6.7 billion parameters. The context length is 4K, and it was released by the IBM research team. I'll put a link in the description below, but this is a text generation data model transformer and is quite impressive here, but hasn't quite caught on yet as this news is brand new. The other deal is the Instruct Lab project. It says Instruct Lab is a model agnostic open source AI project that facilitates con contributions to large language models. If that wasn't word soup enough, here's another one. Instruct Lab's model agnostic technology gives model upstreams with sufficient infrastructure resources, the ability to create regular builds of their open source licensed models, not by rebuilding and retaining the entire model by, by composing new skills into it. A whole bunch of interesting words there that seemingly don't mean much to me at least. I think of this as just a big playground where we have similar tools that we can effectively have multiple people working together to make things such as AI models and fine tune them without being tied down to hardware. Anyways, if I got that wrong, make sure to post it in the comment section below as I don't think they break it down well enough for us. So as the Red Hat Enterprise Linux AI is getting released, they are going to continue to harp on open source and taking control of LLMs. Again, as we're boarding this hype train, and seemingly things in AI just change what seems to be every day. We can summarize things by saying Red Hat is definitely emphasizing the potential for innovation and collaboration using open source. And personally, I do have a little bit of skepticism regarding the motivations here and intentions, even though it makes a lot of sense. Someone was bound to do this. Red Hat seemingly is the first to bring us a enterprise level Linux container for AI. Hopefully they do actually focus on the open source community and aim to provide transparent access to these AI models and the tools to actually simplify the adoption. As mentioned below, this is how things work. And now I wanna know your thoughts on the role of corporations like Red Hat and IBM promoting these initiatives, such as in an AI container and tools as open source. What considerations are you taking as we board off the hype train? I'm sure there's gonna be more information coming out of this in the next few weeks. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, think about subscribing below for more. I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching. Linux can be hard to understand, but I take the most commonly used terms, commands, and subjects in Linux and I break them down into simple to read documents, including Linux terms, flashcards, a checklist, a cheat sheet, and a mind map. And if you're ready to level up your Linux experience and knowledge, go to learn.savvynick.com now and get access to these sheets.